you struggling with gift ideas this year? Yes, I am. Maybe you have a couple of book lover someones, or maybe you have a holiday work party or some loved ones who you're trying to convince that, that books are the most perfect gift. If so, this holiday gift buying guide is for you. So let's face the truth, you guys. As somebody who loves books and who's speaking for everyone else who also loves books, there are no amount of bookmarks or reading lights that are going to be a great gift. Let's be real, book lovers want books. And that's why I tried to create this holiday gift guide that consists only of books. And it's a really hard thing to find the perfect book for your book lover, because unless they provide you a list of books that they're looking for and that they're excited to read but haven't yet, a lot of times it's a guess. And that's the first category in this video today. Book lover books for those people who don't have a list. Then we're also gonna talk about books that everyone will love, even people who think they don't like books. Lastly, I'm going to cover a couple of science fiction books that I recommend, so let's get into these categories. Now the first one is of course the books for book lovers especially those without a list. So the last thing you wanna do is go into the bookstore and randomly pick a book and hope they haven't read it and hope they like it. Well, some people are brave like that, I am not. So I made this list for people like me who would rather go for books that maybe the book lover will actually get to choose. So we have to go with the very obvious gift card. Please consider giving a gift card to your local bookstore, a second hand shop, places like Half Price Books are always a good one if you're in the United States. You can always do Barnes and Noble or Amazon, again, United States, but there are general good bookstores that you can go out and buy gift cards to that you can give to your book lovers so they can pick out their own books. Now don't forget that you can also give audiobooks and ebooks to the person that you love and you can let them choose which book they're going to use. You can use Audible or you can use Kobo, which are both ebook and audiobook services that you can just give them a single credit and they can buy any book they want. So that's always an option for them to choose their own book if they like electronic books. The next option is to go with a subscription service. Maybe you want them to choose it, but you want them to choose multiple books. And if that's the case, I use a service called Everand, which is an audiobook and ebook subscription service. I do believe it's about $10 a month US. And I get an unlimited amount of audiobooks or ebooks as long as they have it in their library. And I do have to warn you, when they say unlimited, it actually means about four or five. And then they start to throttle you back. So it's still cheaper than places like Kobo or Audible where you have to buy individual books for about 15 to 20 bucks. In this way, you can get four to five books and that's a much better deal overall. There are other subscription services out there, but in terms of the books that I'm looking for with science fiction and fantasy, I think Everand is probably the best course. The next option for those people out there who want to give a gift to a book reader is always consider giving something like a Kindle or a iPad. This allows them to listen and to read books and it's almost like giving a gift of a library. So there are so many audio and eBooks available out there that this is an incredible gift if they're willing to put down the paper. Now next, if you happen to know your book lover's very favorite book, or at least one of their all time favorite books, consider getting them a special edition. Now there are lots of different kinds of special editions. Folio is one of the premier companies companies that makes these beautiful illustrated collectible editions of the classic science fiction and fantasy books that are well worth the money. I will warn you though, they are rather expensive, which is why they make for a great gift because oftentimes a book lover is not gonna buy this particular copy for themselves. I will also make sure that you are aware of collectible editions. They don't all have to be folio editions. This is my collectible edition from Barnes and Noble. It has 
the sprayed edges and the beautiful cover. And it's kind of what I would call a display edition of a book that I really love that is meant to be looked at and oohed and odd on my shelf, right? This was definitely a gift and it is a great one for those book lovers out there. Quite a gift. Another possibility for a collector's edition is the anniversary editions of certain books. So this one also has the sprayed edges and it has the shininess of it. This is another edition that I do believe came from a local bookstore that was a gift to me. And it was a great gift because I love this book and I love having something to display on my shelves. Now, if you have a little bit more of a limited budget or maybe their favorite book doesn't have a special edition or an anniversary edition, you can always try to give them multiple different editions of the favorite book. So that way they can have multiple editions of that exact same book. I'm somebody who does that myself. I'm not going to embarrass myself and show you all the different editions I have of Childhood's End, but it's a lot. I will also go ahead and put it out there if you have access to it using a foreign language edition of the favorite book or author that the person is looking for is also a really cool display item. This is my Japanese childhood's end. And yes, it does open the opposite way. It is all in Japanese, as you can tell, and it goes from the top to the bottom. Can I read it? Absolutely not. But is it my favorite edition of childhood end that I have? Probably. Look at how tiny it is. All of the books in Japan are this small. Anyway, I happened to go grab it as a copy for myself, but I also grabbed a copy when I was traveling for a couple of my friends as well. So this can be a really cool gift idea, and it is one that you could do if you happen to be traveling. The next idea is something like a handmade edition. Now this sounds really kind of weird, but this one is a little bit more heartfelt as most handmade editions are. And that is, I had a friend of mine who I had been begging to read some of my favorite books and they finally decided that they were gonna pick up Roadside Picnic, which is a book that I had been begging her to read for a long time. So as a gift, she ended up giving me another copy of Roadside Picnic with all of these little tabbies in it, which she has annotated on little post-it notes, all of her thoughts as she went through this favorite book of mine. And this was an incredible gift because I not only get to reread one of my favorite books, but I also get to see it through her eyes. I get to really understand what she was going through as she read the book with her little comments all the way through the story. To add to this gift, she also gave me one of her favorite books, which is Kazu Ishiguro's The Buried Giant. And not only is she giving me this edition, but she also tabbed this particular one, which means I get to read all of her thoughts as I go through this book for the very first time. This is almost like a way to discuss it, but since we aren't in the same town or country even, this is a way to kind of share our thoughts in real time. And this was such a clever gift, and I think it's a really fantastic idea. Now, the next special edition I'm gonna call is the Secret Stuff Edition. Now this is one that you wouldn't necessarily need to know someone's favorite book to be able to complete it. This one, you would have to do a little bit of arts and crafts style, I guess. This edition is a William Faulkner autobiography. Uh, no, I think it's just a regular biography. This is a just hefty chunk of a book that somebody got as a secondhand book, particularly because it's so big and thick. William Faulkner biographies are something that is a little bit of an inside joke between me and my family. And what they did is they bought me this book and then they cut out the inside pages. Let me show you here. You can see that they cut the inside parts of this and then they tried to glue down some of the pages. So that way, A, nobody has to suffer through this terrible autobiography of William Faulkner. I don't have to read it, but I keep it in my library because there's secret stuff in it. What secret stuff, you ask? Shh, I'm not telling. 
it's a secret. For other book lovers, if you don't happen to know their favorite book, or you happen to be a little bit more strapped for cash than usual, maybe you could get books about books. That's right. I think this book's about breeding books. This is one of the books that I was given um, in the last couple of years. This is 150 bookstores that you have to go to before you die. This book is a really incredible one. You can see that it has bookstores from all around the world in it. And it tells you a little bit about the bookstore, the kinds of books that they have, why they recommend it. Maybe it has some kind of special factor. Maybe it's a little bit historical or maybe it's just a beautiful bookstore. So something like this is always a good option. For science fiction viewers out there, there is a book out there called 150 Best Science Fiction Books of All Time. Uh, one of my good friends named John from Sci-Fi Scavenger recently did a video on this and uh, I'll link that in the description down below if you want to check that out and see what kind of books are on it. But it is a really cool idea to give your science fiction reader an idea of what they would want to read. Another book about books idea would be to do something like getting them a book journal. Now, these are two different options that I have been given in the past. Um, this is one that I think came from Barnes and Noble and it's just a giant list inside of a reading diary where you can list out the title and uh, your review of all of the books that you read. For me myself, I don't use it as much for all of the reviews because I'm somebody who uses Goodreads for that. So uh, this might be one that I regift to someone, but they also have books like this reading journal. This is one that I think is available on Amazon if you're looking for something specific like this. And in this book, you have multiple different pages to keep track of your TBR. You have um, some indexes that allow you to write down the books and your ratings of each individual book. They allow you to write down your TBR or to track your daily reading. They even have a monthly calendar in here where you can write down the books that you finished by month for each year. And then of course, in the back of the book, they have a couple of different pages about book reviews. So as you go through the book, you can review you and remind yourself of different aspects of the book, including the summary, what your thoughts are, and uh, what kind of genre your book was. So this is always also a really good idea to help them organize their TBR, which I could probably use. Now let's move on to the books I would recommend for everyone. These are especially for the people who think that they don't like books, but they really do. All they need is us to convince them that books are the perfect gift, right? So I have quite a few different categories in here, but they're not science fiction. No, what? No, 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 no. What? I know, it's very scary. I know, I know. But we're gonna try to convince them that books are the perfect gift for everyone. So the first category I have is science-inspired books about your daily life that just make science interesting in some way, shape, or form. So the first book I have for this is gonna be How to Astronaut. This is a nonfiction book written by a real astronaut who just goes through all the different processes that you didn't know you wanted to know about what it's like to be an astronaut, how they prepare for different tragedies or disasters, how they go to the bathroom in space, and they even have a bunch of stuff about how to spacewalk, how the training goes, all of the things that you didn't know you wanted to know. And I thought it was just a really cool, clever book, and it's one that I think I'm going to get one of my brothers for this year, so I hope they're not watching. Next I have some nonfiction fun kind of sarcastic books that always make for great gifts. And uh, I have two options right here. This is A Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks. And this is actually a book about different aspects of daily living and what you should know to survive a real zombie apocalypse. It is full of a lot of fun and sarcasm, but it's also full of a lot of like survival tips and actually useful information. So if you're friends with somebody who really likes fun facts, this is probably a really good option. I also have How to Invent Everything, which is a survival guide for the stranded time traveler. This is also a nonfiction book that really goes through a lot of different 
facts about different aspects of our society or plants, animals, different spices, how to cook, how to different technology works. There's so many things in this book that I didn't know, I didn't know. But uh, it's a really fun book. And uh, it's one that you don't necessarily read straight through, but you can just pick up randomly. It's also a really fun book to have in your bathroom if you're that kind of person. Now, my next example is The Food Lab. This is a book that I've talked about on my channel before, but I'm gonna talk to you about it again because I'm in love with this book. This is a real life recipe book that also takes science experiments to teach you the chemistry of how to be a good cook. So so for example, he teaches you exactly with science experiments, all the different number of minutes of eggs and how you can cook them for one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, all the way up to nine minutes. And it shows you what a hard boiled egg will look like after boiling for that long. So that way you can make the perfect boiled egg. He also goes into credible detail about some of the chemistry of a perfect chocolate chip cookie. You also get a lot of really interesting information on how to make vegetables taste more delicious. For example, did you know that Kenji in this book taught me that in order to eat Brussels sprouts, if you cook it with bacon, the pork fat molecule will combine with that Brussels sprout and it'll break down the bitter molecule, which makes it taste better. All the more reason to eat more bacon. I loved this book. It was so useful. And if anybody of you out there are a science nerd like me, this could be a must have for the holidays. I also wanted to show you a really fun picture book that is one that is the ultimate interplanetary travel guide. You can see from the cover here that this book is actually just a bunch of facts about the universe as we know it. And you can see it has beautiful images. You can see that the pages are really great. It has every single planet and what the atmosphere is like, what summer vacation on Mars might look like, close encounters with near earth asteroids, there's so many things in this book that I learned that were really fun and clever. And while it's not exactly nonfiction, it's not exactly fiction either. I don't know. It's kind of a fun one. Very pretty pictures, very gorgeous coffee table book. So definitely one to, to, to look out for. Now, if we need a little bit of inspiration because maybe they're still not into science quite yet, or maybe you have yourself a graduate who you need to inspire, who's going going to their next phase in life, I would recommend a couple of inspirational books. These are books that would be books you could read while on the toilet or right before bed that are just a couple of pages each. So the first one is The Holy Man by Susan Trott. This is a cute little book with, like I said, just one or two page chapters about people who line up on this hill for the holy man and how they expect him to fix all of their problems and what he does about each of their problems. Each story has kind of a moral to it and it is definitely an allegorical tale. It is one that my high school teacher gave me when I graduated high school and I still remember some stories from this book. It really meant a lot to me and I think it could mean a lot to someone you love too. Another book that I have have is this really fun pocket edition of The Art of War. This is one that I have in my guest bathroom that you can flip through while you're on the toilet or while you have a couple of minutes and you can really learn all of the details that is summarized because this is an abridged version of The Art of War because it's not that long and it's full of pictures, which I really appreciate. So I always learn something when I page through this book and I think that this could be one that would be a really awesome gift for anyone. Lastly, I found this little tiny book, Rules for a Night by Ethan Hawke. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about this one. This is a very clever little book. It has also got incredibly short, tiny chapters. And this is told from a knight's perspective on the eve of battle. He realizes that according to his honor, he is going into battle that can't be won. And he knows he's gonna die the next day. And so he writes these notes to his kids who are toddlers at the time of everything he wants them to know. And 
it's an incredible perspective of a parent to children. And it's just these really incredible little knowledge nuggets of what we need to know about being an adult and about how hard it is An encouraging perspective. This was an incredible little book. It was illustrated, I believe, by his wife. And you can see here's a page about gratitude with a little picture. And you can see he has just a little one, two page chapter after it. And then he goes on to the next subject. So we kind of get little tiny chunks of wisdom throughout this book that I would highly recommend. It's a fun, beautiful little book that I think even people who don't like reading would love. The next category is gonna be the self-help category because a lot of people need books to apply to them and making their life better, which is why I think that books like The Atomic Habit are so popular. That is a book that I think would apply to everyone, and so I would highly recommend it, even though I don't personally own that particular book. I would also encourage people to consider picking up philosophical-related books, books like Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. This is a gentleman who was in World War II. He was a Jew and a psychologist, and he really talks about why some people did better in concentration camps than others. It's about a man's search for meaning. So so uh, there's a lot of like little tidbits in this book that really apply to life. And if that's not heavy enough for you, or if you want to be really popular under the Christmas tree, you can always get financial books for your family, which is definitely what I did last year. I got every member of my family a financial book because you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I try to tell everybody that if they read one financial book a year, that's like gaining a whole bunch of one to 2,000 extra dollars every year. Worth it? I think so. But uh, don't take my word for it. Pick up some financial books and see which ones would apply to your family. Now, the last category for books for everyone is going to be, if all else fails, go for comedy. Now, I realize that not everybody's gonna have my sense of humor, but uh, the ones that I have to recommend are nerdy books like William Shakespeare's version of <laughs> Star Wars. This is the Empire Strikes Back one. You can see it's not very long, but it is full of iambic pentameter and actually takes you through Empire Strikes Back in play form. It is uproariously awesome to read. I 100% learned to love iambic pentameter because of these books and also because I'm a big Star Wars fan. There's also some really fantastic illustrations in this book and uh, I really recommend these if you're looking for kind of a gag gift to give away. Now the next book in this category is one I found in my college days and this is the Autobiography of Bigfoot. Look at how hard back this book is. It's super short, kind of like a kid's book, and it is 10 out of 10 insane. It is exactly my sense of humor, which may not be yours, but I think this is the best white elephant gift, the best best friend gift that ever existed. This book is called In Me Own Words, and the entire book has full of ridiculous pages that are full of splash and funny images, and they're definitely handwritten, but they're They've got like funny jokes in every single page and it's full of things about society and finding a job and dealing with expectations and dealing with fun. And I laughed at every single page, every single passage. And there's so many inside jokes that come from this book between me and my friends that I would highly recommend it. I loved this one and I really am sorry if you don't, but it is fantastic. So now let's Let's move on. Now, you do have to know with this category, it's not necessarily my most favorite books. These are the books that have the most mass appeal, in my opinion, and so the most number of people would enjoy them. I would be doing everyone a disservice if we didn't happen to mention Andy Weir's two novels. We got to talk about The Martian because everybody loves that book, and also Project Hail Mary, which was just fantastic. Science fiction fan, not science fiction fan. A lot of people have converted to science fiction because of these books. So I would highly recommend giving these as gifts to your people that you're trying to convert to science fiction. The next one I would recommend is 
Flowers for Algernon. Flowers for Algernon is a good recommendation because it doesn't have any crazy space battles. There's no crazy technology in it. And there aren't any aliens or weird robots that you have to get past. Instead, it's the story of a boy and what intelligence does to us as individuals in our society today. This book was written several decades ago and still rings true today. I think that anybody who has a little ounce of intelligence and a little bit of a heart will definitely cry in this book. And it's one that I would recommend to almost everyone. Next, I'm gonna recommend the book Semiosis by Sue Burke. You knew this book was gonna be on here because I'm gonna be honest. This is the book that I get most of my friends because I feel like it's not very popular, but it's one that has mass appeal. Most people out there will find something in this book to love. And I absolutely adore this series. So it is also one that is one of my favorites. So I would definitely recommend at least checking out Semiosis. In that same vein, I also would recommend Elizabeth Moon's Remnant Population featuring Ophelia who is a 72 year old woman. Now, who is not gonna love a cantankerous old lady in the future? Now there may or may not be first contact in this book, but I think it's still one that most people can relate to, especially because we're all kind of tired of dealing with people, as is Ophelia. And that's why this book would make for a great one that I think almost anybody can relate to. Next, I have a couple of books that are the comedy side of things. And again, not everyone will relate to comedy style that is mine, but I will definitely mention that Dungeon Crawler Carl is definitely a really popular book. It's so outrageous and so fun to follow that I think that the majority of people will really love of this book and especially now that it has been picked up it's easier to find in bookstores and I would also still recommend the audiobook version of this because it's just a good time. If you're not on the Dungeon Crawler Carl bandwagon I would also recommend Dennis Taylor's We Are Legion We Are Bob because this is another one that is outrageous and yet it's so applicable to everyone. I had such a good time with it. And I think a lot of people who would be my kind of people that would hang out with me would appreciate it as well. Now, I also, for those of you out there who have friends or family members who don't wanna read a whole lot, you know, they're kind of intimidated by books. I wanted to recommend three particular novellas that I think in general would be ones that people could like. And I'm specifically making them novellas because they're shorter, so they're not quite as daunting as some of the other maybe longer books might be. So for people who are overly busy, I would recommend Adrian Tchaikovsky's Elder Race. I really think any of his novellas could fit here, but Elder Race is one that straddles the line of both science fiction and fantasy. It's easy to follow along, it's easy to get a hold of, and it's a quick read. So I think this one would appeal to the most number of people. I would also recommend Murderbot. The first book is also Systems Red, in case for some reason you haven't heard of this series. It's about a socially anxious robot whose job it is to murder people and guard them in space. And it is a really fun time about what it's like to be human. And I think, again, it's overly relatable. So it's a great gift and it's not very long. Then the last novella that I would highly recommend in this category is going to be A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, because this is a little bit of fantasy mixed into a little bit of science fiction, but it's a lot of coziness and it's a lot of self-help. I didn't know you could combine science fiction and self-help, but it turns out Becky Chambers did it. So this is one of those books that I think will really apply to those Gen Zers out there because it is a fantastic, cozy, fun read that you can't help but love. Now for those folks out there who might have people who are readers already, I have three books that I would recommend for them. The first book is Wool by Hugh Howie. This is one that I think has mass appeal, especially because it is now a TV series on Apple TV. And so I think that a lot of young folks like having those crossover mediums and they might love the book just as much as they love the TV show. 
show. I would also say the same for All You Need Is Kill. This book is the same storyline as The Edge of Tomorrow. And so again, it has that crossover potential. And the last book that I have to recommend in this list is going to be for those old timers who may have missed some fantastic books. This is my ultimate dad recommendation. And I only say that even though I enjoyed the series and I am clearly not a dad, but I loved 007 and the James Bond style movies. And so if you know somebody who is in that genre, who likes those kinds of things, I think that they would really enjoy the series, The Stainless Steel Rat by Harry Harrison. These are really available to find all over the internet for cheap, and especially in the Omnibus Edition, where you can get three novellas all in one book. And I would highly recommend, regardless of the art and the cover, these books are really fun. They're very much 007 in space. I think they would have mass appeal for people who would enjoy those kind of spy, thriller, con artist type stories. So that does it for this year's holiday gift giving guide. I gotta tell you that I held no good ideas back. So I probably won't make another gift giving guide for at least another couple years, but hopefully these are enough ideas to tide you over for any of those work parties or white elephant gifts or even if you're just looking for things to put on your holiday list. Let me know in the comment section down below if I happen to have missed anything or if you can't find one of the items that I've mentioned here and I will definitely try to help you. In the meantime, you guys, I wish you the happiest of holidays and uh, until the next video.